Okay, I'm listening to some music now. This is a tutorial how you can quickly switch the music from your headphones to uh, your speakers. So you press this, and now it's coming out of speakers. I don't know if you can hear that. Turn off a bit. I don't. Oh, sh I don't want to get done with copyright. So I search high and low to find out how to um, switch audio devices quickly because there isn't a simple thing in Windows, at least Windows 7, maybe they patched it in Windows 8, I don't know. Um, but there isn't a quick way to switch between uh, audio, this is distracting. <laughs> there isn't a quick way to switch between audio coming out of headphones, um, which at the moment for me is rooted through my, um, my microphone to my headphones. Um, there isn't a quick way to switch from that to speakers through the jack on my computer, uh, and my jack is then connected up to a stereo through the aux output. So I used to be able to, what I used to do, this is the way you have to do it if you don't have anything installed. Um, you right click on the speaker icon, you say playback devices, you click on which one you want and you say set default, mouse is flickering. Um, and so now it will automatically play all the sound out of my stereo. Uh, and then if I do this one, Samsung Media mic, then it'll play out my headphones. It's pretty slow. So I'm going to show you guys a couple of things that you can do. Um, right. So this is going to involve some macros. Um, and basically, if you don't know, macros are kind of automated key presses and automated mouth, mouth, and mouse movements. Um, so that the system will do all that stuff really quickly. So you don't have to. So, you know, you click one button and it, it presses all the other shit. So um, there are two programs that I'm going to recommend for this. Um, the first one is... Jitbit macro recorder. You can go to the website. That's cool. Just type in um, Jitbit macro recorder, get to here, download it, say you want to evaluate it. Um, now, this will set up as a trial, but you can actually make it so that you can use the mac macros when you're not on, after the trials run out. I'll get to that in a minute because you can compile it to EXE. So, once you have that program, um, we need another program as well, actually. Maybe I should have done that before. Now, I found this a while back when I was sorting this out for my first computer, and I thought I'd make this video while I'm setting it for my second computer, while it was still you know, fresh in my head. Um, and I can't find this program anywhere. I found it when I was doing my old computer. Can't find it now. Um, and this, the program's called Sound Shortcut, and I will link that in the description. Um, I'll like host it in my Dropbox or something. Tiny program. Um, what it does is, you can see down here, just this little thing here. Um, you can add it to start, start it, which is I recommend a lot. Uh, and this allows you to press the Windows key and S, and they'll jump you straight to the playback options. So, you know, that's a pretty good shortcut in itself. Uh, so then in Jitbit, uh, go away. Um, go away. Uh, <laughs> yes, this is a really good program because it gives you so many options of how to set macros. It's definitely the best I found. Um, so you want to head to uh, keyboard, yeah. Keyboard, and then you say you want a key, and the first key is going to be the left Windows. Um, key down yes uh, and then you just want to map out how you would do it so yes hold so then when it's key down it means it's holding the key down and then you have you put a key up for when it's meant to release the key uh, so then key press s yeah okay and then you can lift the windows key um, key up windows left and basically if we play that back it opens our sound options so that's like the first step uh, and then you really have to experiment how you do it the fastest way yourself and then map this out on the macros. So if I show you here, I press left windows down, we'll get you into this menu and down again, down again, down again, right? And we hit, oh, in fact, no, start again. So, uh, windows key S down, we'll get you onto the first option and press tab and you'll get down the bottom here. Tab again, you get set default, then you hit enter and then it set the device and then you can press escape and exits. So then what we want to do is map that on macros. So now we've got this up. There's a really cool one, which is, uh, there's wait commands. Delay, yeah, delay command. Uh, and then wait for window command, which you want to do. Because depending on your system, it'll be a different kind of delay between when you press the Windows key S and when this window comes up. So you need it to wait exactly until the window comes up. And this is way better than using a timer because sometimes if your computer's doing a lot of stuff, it'll take longer to come up. And if the macros aren't timed properly, it'll mess up. So wait for the window to appear, window title, sound, which you saw there, by the way, it's called sound. Uh, do that, it just works. Um, wait for the window to appear, and then we want to key again, key press, um, 
down. Down, 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 down. If you actually hover over here and press the D key, there you go, down. Um, play that again. So then it selects on there. Then you tip, tab two times and then press enter. Oh, yeah, it's up here. It does that weird thing. It goes up here. Um, so what was it? Down and then tab twice. T for tab. Tab, 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 enter, enter. Uh, and then we can press control C, control V. Now it's tab, tab. And then one more for enter. Right. Hang on. That's the wrong place. Drag it down there. Then you play again. And blah, blah. No. Oh, yeah, okay. So because this was already taken, it, it tabbed twice, went to properties, and then set accepted that. So if I set this to default, so it's not already on that. And then play it. That uh, said the thing to speak it. So now you've got your macro working and it does what you want it to do. Uh, you probably want to make two to go back again, which I've done here. Uh, also, I've reskinned one of them so that it has a speaker icon. I'll show you that in a sec. So then you want to go file, compile to exe. In fact, let me show you. Uh, okay, all right, this is what I expected to happen. This is completely normal, don't worry about it. Now, some antiviruses will detect this as a Trojan. Uh, believe me, it's not a Trojan. I've been using this forever. But because it uses macros and keystrokes and stuff, um, shit, I'm just deleting my shortcuts. Why did I do that? This is freaking stupid. Does this still, ugh. Does this one work? Okay, this one still works. Uh, I'm such a dumbass to just delete my shortcut. Okay, this is good then, um, because I get to remake it. So yeah, uh, you want to disable your antivirus, and I know for some people that's gonna be like, whoa, are you insane? Yeah. Um, <laughs> you wanna go compile to exe, desktop, Call it like uh, sound macro, yay, and then it will be successful. So it's just the antivirus, and promise me, prom I promise you, it's not an anti, it's not a freaking Trojan, right? So then we have an exe. Double click that, and it will do it all for us. Unless you're already on that one, by the way. So yeah, you gotta make sure you're on the right one. And you click the right one, and then it works. Um, so yeah, now we have this, and regardless of whether you've registered this program. Um, or you're still on trial, the exe will still work. You can copy this to another machine and it will work on that machine as well, so real good. Um, but then you wanna make a uh, make it look nicer because you've got this like dumb robot and if you pin this to your desktop, in fact, you can't actually right click and do it from here, you gotta go to desktop in a window and then you right click and then say pin to taskbar. Then you'll have it, then you'll have it down here for like a real quick shortcut. So I see I've got this one for the speakers and this one, this one also does the same thing? Yeah, it does. Okay, I made two of the same. Um, yeah, because you want a sh quick shortcut, you want them to be kind of nice and labeled. So I have, you know, a speaker icon with the one. So there is another program to get, actually. I forgot about it. Uh, it's called Re... What was it called? Resource Hacker. And I guess just one of the downloads, well. Yeah, this is the wrong one. Um, and this will allow you to change the icon for an exe um and which that's exactly what we want to do so install this yeah 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 mm -hmm. okay uh now we have resource hacker it's so quick look at that uh so then you want to open it open the uh, exe which we put in the desktop so um find yourself users Alex, uh, desktop, sound micro, open. Uh, and then we have the icon. There you go, see, there's a bunch of different ones. Um, yeah, and these are just, how icon files work is that they have lots of the same size, lots of different sizes, That's lots of different sizes. Let's see if I can actually remember how to do this. Okay, that took me a while to figure out, but I got it again. Uh, so you need to right click on the exe you made, say open with resource hacker, uh, and they'll open up with the old icons all in here. Uh, and then you see you need to say action, uh, replace icon, new icon. Uh, and then you can use your own ICO file, which is the format for icon files, which you can find on the internet. Um, or you can lift it from an existing exe, which I have here. This is the one with the, the speaker with the two on it, see here. Uh, so say open that one, replace. Uh, and then you need to go to version info, see this one with zero. Delete that resource, yes. Delete this resource, yes. All right, uh, now we'll just have that with the icon and then you need to save as, otherwise it doesn't work if you save it, try to save it over, you have to save as. I'm gonna save this one as um, audio, audio 
test.exe. You need to put the .exe or the, otherwise it won't work. And there you go. You have your shortcut with the right icon. Double click that and it does the same thing. So I already had them all selected, so just do that. And then when you want to get it on the bottom there, you need to say, need to say, pin stats off, there you go. And then you can drag this here, get rid of this one, it's the old one. And there you have it. You have the two uh, audio icons switched between. So this one does, well, this one does the stereo, okay. And this one also does the stereo. I made duplicate macros, I'm dumb. So I need to go back and change it so that it's with the range there. So down, 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 four downs. Uh, okay, replace that. Control C, Control V, Control V, Control V. Uh, play that. It's that easy, guys. So um, have fun. I don't know. Yeah, I hope this helps a lot of people. Um, really helped me. I had to figure this out myself, so. Took a long time, but it definitely helped me out. Oh, this is what the frick? Um, definitely helped me out. I hope it helps you guys out. I use this all the time now because you know I'm listening to my iTunes. I'm like, oh, it's in my head. What about the speakers? It's good. I don't want to get sued. See you guys. <laughs>